I'm Colin Bennett. I'm head of digital distribution at GAM, and I'm the innovation co-lead on the Idea Drop platform here. And I'm joined by Abigail Barnard, who will help with the presentation as we go. So, GAM Investments. We're a global asset manager. Uh, we manage quite a bit of money on behalf of um, clients' assets across investment management and private labeling business. We're around 700 employees globally, and we support over 128 investment professionals who are actively investing on behalf of our clients um, across investment management, wealth management, and private labeling solutions. So it's a global organization. In April, just like everyone else, we hit lockdown. Um, and as we did that, we decided to implement IdeaDrop. We actually accelerated the implementation and we put that platform in place just as we went into lockdown. Um, Abby um, and myself were selected and tasked with making it a success. Um, what I'd like to bring to the table here really is that there were two people who worked in different departments. Abby was an executive assistant to the C-suite. Um, she had um, skills in communications, promotion, project management, organization, C-suite connectors. She's a facilitator and, uh, and had a passion for innovation. I was in a different part of the business. I headed up digital distribution and I looked after comms, marketing, digital technology, process government, change management and stakeholder familiarization. And when we got together, the combination brought a lot to the table and made it a success. And the results speak for themselves. Just over a year, we had an idea action rate of around 20%, plus really strong senior and employee support for the platform. Ideation and innovation is now even more firmly embedded in our culture. And next slide, please. And you can see that in some of the headline numbers. So in just over a year live, we've had around 349 um, ideas dropped. And if you look on the right hand side there, there's nearly 19,000 um, actions on those ideas across the organization. That's people liking, engaging, and kind of using it as a social platform. So they're discussing the ideas. And out of that, we've actioned 58 of those ideas. And um, we found that the introverts and extroverts began to have equal say, and we had no more same old faces again, coming up with the same old ideas. So it was really great and fresh. Next slide, please. So implementation, right? We, we needed to create engaging moments to build credibility. As I mentioned, we accelerated the implementation due to COVID and we brought it forward three months, but that extra um, sort of momentum really helped us get fast decisions and local strong leadership got things done. We moved at pace, pace and it kept that momentum high. To get everything ready, we created a Gambassador network across the business and Abby will talk about that a little bit later. But we've got really strong processes for our pipeline, our innovation pipeline, and we embedded it into business as usual activity. So it became part of the mix. We really wanted a positive energy and we created things like a countdown campaign to build awareness. And really importantly, we actually started and launched with a number of things. And one of them was something called Instagram, where you could share light moments or as in social media, you know, you could put things onto this platform. And it was around wellness as well. So people could share, you know, at a point of high stress when we were actually all working from home at COVID, we could use this platform actually to get people familiarized with the platform, look at things like the instruction set that we put on there, the guidance of how to raise idea, the guidance of how to um, be innovative, if you can guide it. But it was all there. It got people familiar with it and it seeded the, then the next stage, which was then to give us their ideas, which was fantastic. And it worked. We had professional and strong and um, supporting assets. We, we had no printouts because of um, agile working, but we used videos and imagery a lot to really make it look professional, look like we really cared. And it was an important thing that we were doing. And obviously it all worked on the mobile app so people could access it any time, any place. Our communication methods were primarily around the intranet. It's a trusted method of communication within the organization, but we brought each challenge in Idea Drop Alive by having it almost like a marketing campaign. We actually had calls to action. We broadcast live to all the um, GAM staff. We de delivered emails direct to their mailbox. And we always, like a campaign, had strong follow-up. We looked at data and we had the comms plan to back it up. So we made sure it worked. And with all good things, if the CEO supports it as well, you get traction. And our CEO gave us and three founding challenges, which really did kickstart and spark the action. And our senior leadership team have been thoroughly engaged in, in everything that they've, they've done on the platform, which has been great, which has built credibility, given us solid foundations. It's made all our responses quite agile. So we've kept up with the challenges at hand. 
it's given us strong governance and really made strong governance and strong communication at the heart of what we do. Next slide, please. So the ambassadors, who are they? Um, and more importantly, where are they? So our ambassadors are full representation across all 14 locations at all levels of seniority across different departments. Um, how did we get them involved? We actually approached uh, different senior members of staff across the company, asking them to put forward colleagues who would benefit from more exposure, um, who wanted to potentially build more relationships across the business, or just had a passion for either GAM or innovation. Um, so what do the ambassadors do? What is their role? So the ambassadors meet weekly at what we call our idea committee. Um, at the idea committee, we review the pipeline, we discuss ideas. Um, the agenda is data driven. Um, we use reports, engagement monitoring, highlighting ideas that have really resonated, um, and we push ideas along the platform. So another thing that Idea Committee has been really helpful for is it acts as a major communication forum that facilitates facilitates change. So it could be simple things like quick wins. They're identified and then we can action them without bureaucracy. Um, other ideas um, like bigger ideas that we think may have some legs. We actually use the idea committee and then we change into an innovation session, inviting other people, people who have um, commented on the idea, um, people, stakeholders, and then we hold that innovation session, we have a, a big old chat about it, and then we see if it's got any legs. Um, one other key thing is existing projects underway. Because of the broad range of people um, who are on the idea committee and their ambassadors, we are able to often see that actually this idea is already being done in this location by these people, and then we can um, communicate that to the wider organisation. So it's a really big communication key, key aspect. Now, obviously, being a ambassador, it is uh, voluntary. It, it, it goes alongside people's day jobs. So we really appreciate that. And we really appreciate the time they spend on the platform, liking and, and fleshing out ideas. We then wanted to give something back to them. So we actually did a Meet Your Ambassador internet story that went straight to everybody um, globally, their inboxes. So they just got some exposure there, which we thought was really important to give back to them. They're giving so much on the platform. Could I go to the next slide, please? So I just very quickly want to talk about some really helpful factors that have been key to um, the success of Idea Drop at GAM. So um, mainly it has to be the senior leadership buy-in. This has been instrumental in the success. They have been fantastic. They have gone on, they have um, interacted with people's ideas. They've approached us to raise challenges themselves. So that has been hugely positively impacting. Um, we also have standing agendas at governance committees. Um, this ensures that ideas are getting pushed through to the correct place and they're being reviewed and people are kind of aware of what people are talking about if they don't check the uh, platform every day. Um, idea progress and updates we often do at global town halls, um, senior leadership team meetings, departmental meetings, committees, etc. Um, this is just to keep the buzz going. It reminds people that idea drops there. It gets people talking about it, talking about ideas. Um, we encourage people at these meetings to fully utilize the platform. Um, and from that, we often manage to get some authentic challenges. So when we're a part of it, giving an update, listening in on these meetings we kind of find authentic challenges that we can then roll out which is really really helpful um, obviously naturally idea drop provides a sample for ideation to get ideas out there be it named or cloaked sometimes these ideas wouldn't be discussed because people didn't have the um they didn't want to put it out there so that we've got that ability um, anonymization has been a godsend i have to say so it's helped to surface the most innovative and challenging ideas, again, that people may not have want to put their name to. Um, so that's been really helpful. One thing that we've uh, realized actually uh, is that the uncloaking has um, kind of been 
it, it was really encouraged. So once ideas get a little bit of traction, or if again, the senior leadership team comment, we notice people uncloaking. So it's really building confidence amongst the, uh, the staff, which is, which is fantastic to see. Um, and finally, I have to say the relentless energy from the ambassadors, from myself and Colin, I think people probably maybe even get a bit sick of us, um, but people are really enjoying it. And it's embedding an innovative culture into our organization, which is amazing to see. The changes have been fantastic. Um, so next slide, please. Thanks, Abby. So four key adoption challenges. We thought we're, we're, we're condensing them down for you, and hopefully this is useful based on the experience that we had over the last year. So the main things we thought that the human things, you know, those were the things that we really had to get right. So we've got four for you. So what was number one? It was the idea platform credibility. What's the point? Nothing will get done anyway. We've done this before. We've all been there. There's been the spreadsheet that had the ideas on. There's the mailbox that someone sends their ideas in. They didn't really work because they didn't have the platform. But we had the platform and it's a social platform. So you can engage. We made sure that we communicated progress and wins regularly. An idea is practically nothing if it hasn't got execution, delivery and action against it. So we made it really action based. And we made sure people know it. So if it was actioned, we fed back, we respected everyone's ideas, we gave every idea and the, the, the due diligence it needed and the process it needed, and we followed through with all of those. And it was best of all recorded on the platform for transparency. So everyone could find out whether it was credible or not, what had been actioned or not, and that really worked. Number two, too many ideas. Is everything really an idea? Well. Doesn't matter, does it? Thousands of ideas you can have, but there might be one that might be that gold dust that you've really been looking for, right? You should encourage ideas, get that culture going. It does not matter. But do be careful to dedupe, triage, and ensure that you're on top of the ideas to make sure that it's not just the initial tsunami that comes out, it's actually something that's structured that can be used and can be actioned. We found that our initial idea tsunami, which there was one, it was a huge crest, actually gave way to much more thoughtful structure. And that really helped because people got used to it. And then the, the true innovation started coming through. Number three, who thought of this first? Hey, that was my idea. Ideas clash with existing projects. This always happens, right? That's my idea. It's not really right that it's that case because the, 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 we found that 90% of ideas overlapped other initiatives or already were being talked about anyway so people saying it was their idea not that they did but if they thought that ownership wasn't really about that it was actually about incentivizing people for action to get stuff done to move innovation forward and move it um, to an area where it can be executed we carefully identified project overlaps and looked through with stakeholders their involvement what the idea was and we altered project scopes that were already underway to actually include some of these ideas if they were slightly different to the ideas already in progress within those reports, within those projects, sorry. So you, you can see ownership was really more about getting action rather than shifting the focus from ownership to action. And lastly, number four was rewards and recognition for idea. You know, the, can I be paid? Um, can I have a percentage of the, of the savings that get made and all those type of things? Well, in an ideal world, yes, but it's not always practical. So we openly discussed this with the ambassadors and the, the consensus was actually innovation is a core competency of the role and it's part of the job. People were happy with that. It, they were pleased with doing that sort of thing. And the reward, reward and recognition comes due to the exposure to senior leadership, visibility, career progression, and importantly, we included it within our um, performance measurement and management personal objectives that at the, um, throughout the year and at the end of the year, if you participated well, you would get the appropriate reward and recognition too as part of your annual review. Next slide, please. So lastly, the business impact using idea drop, you know, innovation at GAMP now has a platform, it has a home. It can come from anywhere, it crosses silos and it's actively diverse, inclusive and transparent across the company. By working on ideas, we share common issues and it brings this global company closer together. It identified common themes and solved difficult problems efficiently by crowdsourcing the best solutions without bias. Anyone could um, input into those ideas. 
It helped align both strategic and tactical goals, and it facilitated useful in innovation. Abby touched on that it built in a, uh, individuals' innovation confidence, where they weren't confident before around raising ideas and maybe change and innovation. They felt comfortable doing that now. They had a platform to do it, and they knew they were supported. And it got um, we firmly embedded innovation into our culture. And by engaging and sharing these ideas, people were more connected and communicating with senior leadership teams, including our CEO. You could engage directly on the platform. It was great. Inclusive, inclusivity and honest, open transparency was key in silo and hierarchy busting. The platform opened that up. You could really contribute whoever and wherever you were. You had a voice. Everyone had the voice. And now at GAM, idea drop is now common language. It's widely accepted across the organization and is the place for raising or engaging with innovative change. So hopefully you found that useful. It's really difficult to get it all into 10 or so minutes, but we're, we're now open to questions in, in the next few minutes before the workshop starts. Hi, Colin. Can you hear me? Hi, Madeline. Yep. Hi. Um, just a question. You said that the uh, CEO came up with three really good challenges um, for you, which uh, helped engagement. Uh, what were they? They were around our key strategic objectives. So you got me on the spot here now, but they were around growth, efficiency, and collaboration. So the CEO recorded the video because um, we were in lockdown yeah, in, 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 in his own house, in his own room, with his own cameras, and um, recorded the challenges, posted them to us. We put them onto the platform, and then the ideas came through. So what was really good is it aligned with the strategic um, uh, goals of the organization and got people talking and thinking and activating the, the strategy. Thank you very much. And if no one else is putting up their hand, I'm going to ask you another one, which is, do you think that you would have been so successful if you hadn't had the lockdown incentive? Because actually in this particular instance, I think, um, lockdown it seems to have helped you rather than hindered i think that's spot on i think it really has helped because by moving on onto the online platform and the whole shift to digital um people began knowing this was a channel that they can communicate and it helped them um, it was helpful it was not a hindrance you know people generally thought that they could actually contribute um positively by using this platform to organizational goals and improvements and there's a big drive again to get better. There always is. And this was a great way of unleashing that talent. Um, and, and the timing was perfect. It, it really did help. But when people are away, they wanted to contribute. This was the um, channel that was presented to them uh, as the way they could contribute to that innovative change. A lot of people said they felt even more connected than ever. I certainly did because I was speaking to so many people from overseas. Where you usually just bump into the people in the offices. Um, so we had that. Um, we also saw a lot of people use the social side, like Colin, um, Colin mentioned. So a lot of people were checking in on each other and we had a lot of wellness um, ideas posted. Um, out for back it, we had a huge um, walk uh, steps challenge that we used. So people, it actually really, really connected people. So I would say, yes, I'd agree with Colin. It definitely helped that we were agile working. Yeah. Which, and I'm not sure whether this is, um, I know that we've got a workshop coming, but that's um, a really interesting topic is what do you think we need to do differently now that we're coming out of lockdown? And, you know, kind of, because I think it does require, you know, you, you've, uh, you've, got, you've got the crest of the wave, but now what do we do to rep So we were, we were very cognizant of that, that it was going to come back. Um, and what that's... Um, why, why we put in our governance process uh, is in place. So for example, all our ideas and feed through to our corporate governance structure. So we have committees across, for example, talent, product, operations, you know, techno those type of things. And we purposefully create a standing agenda item in each one of those um, fora to actually feed through the ideas once they've been through our pipeline to make sure they're fleshed out. You've got the right value, the right business um, criteria and all that sort of thing, benefits identified, and they will be um, pushed through into those committees. So there is always that flow of ideas into the, um, the lifeblood of the organization through the um, governance backbone. 
So we're always going to be doing that, whether you're in the office or out of the office, because that's always going to be taking place. And it will, it will bring that through through the senior management engagement. I've just seen, uh, Nigel, your question as well. Um, is idea drop? engagement included in annual appraisals and new staff inductions yes it is the answer is we worked with hr to make sure that it is mentioned um, and people are signed up during their induction they are then um, passed along to myself and colin who then give them kind of an induction on how to use the platform and yes uh, colin do you want to elaborate on the appraisals but yes it is also worked into our um, pmms yeah, so on the appraisals, we've um, canvassed our, um, our management teams and they will be, they, they do put them into the um, annual appraisals. So, you know, as part of innovation, you, you can actually add it. We have a new workday platform. You can add it as a strategic um, ob objective that you can be assessed at your mid year review or your final review. And also within workday, you can get feedback of uh, your contributions. So, you know, Abby and I will be purposefully feeding back to people that they've been great contributors to the platform. I've also seen one, one question here from Mr. Chakraborty. Generally, we see top management and their subordinates get confined only on ideas that spawn by them, how this change can be achieved. So I'm assuming that touches on the point we were talking about. It, it crosses hierarchies and silos, that anyone can now um, talk about this. And by having the crowd, if you like, um, see which ideas resonate, and the ones that actually get the most momentum, it crosses through hierarchy. So it doesn't matter if an idea is good, it will be recognized. And let's say, for example, if there was a traditional stack where a, a, a middle manager was blocking ideas or a senior manager was blocking ideas, that's now broken because you can actually raise an idea to anyone within the organization and the stakeholders in that process, for example, or that business model or that idea, will all have an input and they'll make that idea resonate. And we ensure that our senior leadership team is at that kind of top of the tree, that that full board, if you like, will actually have an overview of those ideas. So one person can't hold one thing back. So it's really democratized innovation within the organization.